Today we're going to be recording a four-part setting of Que Tout Bien Plein by Josquin. This setting is special because it has a canon in the two bass parts, and you can see this particular canon happens every half note, and right now this edition has two whole notes per measure. So when the canon occurs at every half note, that means it's actually happening every half beat, and that's going to be useful for us later. So the most crucial part of the entire project is finding a suitable tempo. This is where the Teleminator can help me out. I click anywhere on the application, and then I use the return key to tap in the tempo that I want, preferably while I'm singing or humming or thinking of the song that I'm going to be doing. And Teleminator averages about 90. I'll be using that later, of course. In order to put the canon part from the Teleminator together with the Superius and the tenor parts from the original score, I'll be using Logic Pro as a digital audio workstation to provide the backbone of all the audio work in the piece. So I'll navigate over to Logic Pro, start a new session, and then I'll add two tracks so I can add the Superius and the tenor to the canon later. Then I'll set the tempo that I got from the Teleminator, which was 90, into Logic Pro. And then I'll set the metronome. I want it to click while recording, so I'll make sure that's enabled. And I'll go through this kind of quickly, but just ask me questions if you'd like to. Or you can freeze the video and check the settings. I'll set the pre-roll to two bars. That'll give me enough time to get ready. Once we've set the tempo in Logic Pro, we can navigate back to the Teleminator and set the canon point. As I said before, my particular edition of this piece uses two whole notes per measure, which means the beat is happening every whole note, and the canon's happening every half note, which means, actually, that the canon is happening twice as quickly as every beat. Some editions use half notes per beat and quarter note canons. It doesn't matter what edition you use as long as you understand that this means that our tempo needs to actually be twice as fast when we have a one beat canon. So now we have the tempo set at 180 and the canon at one beat in Teleminator. We no longer need a metronome in Teleminator because we have one in Logic, so I'll turn them both off. So let's fire up our metronome in Logic and see if we can match it in Teleminator. Okay, that'll work for this. Um, let's go back to Teleminator and turn the camera on. I'm going to record this part live. Set the destination. Now it's recording, now it's recording, recording but we can clip it later. later. Go to Logic, go to logic start, start Monotronome, monotronome, monotronome get, the get the count in. So we can measure the count in. Go, go. go. A few moments later. Okay, now we have a video we can use on the desktop from the Teleminator. Uh, we drag it into our logic session, and what we have to do is move it so that it starts right at zero. Uh, this is done by hand, and I usually expand each track so I can see exactly the waveform, and then I have to manually line it up so that it starts right at zero. Um, so the best way to do that is to just drag, make some room to the left, and you can audition the track. That works, and now we're ready to record the other two parts, the superiors and tenor. But first, let's label the track so we know what we're doing. We've got the canon part, and we've got superiors right below it, and at last we've got tenor. Let's talk a little bit about panning. Panning is, for me, very important to the final project. When you record in Teleminator, you'll have a fully panned stereo recording where the part you play is as far to the left as it can go, which is minus 64, 0 is the middle, and the canon part is at 63 to the right. So we can leave the canon part in the middle because that will actually preserve its built-in stereo panning. The superior part I'm actually going to put to the left on stage, just left of center, and I just do it visually. The tenor part we put to the right, slightly to the right, and this gives us a seating which has the two bass parts sitting at the extreme left and right, the superior sitting left of middle, 
So it would be the second voice from the left. Then we have the tenor to the right, which is the second voice from the right, and then the second bass part all the way to the right. I like to add a little reverb to my recordings. I use Space Designer in Logic Pro. I usually go about negative 13 or negative 10 decibels for the mix. You can usually listen to it to see how it sounds. You can listen to that. Yeah, it will work. And then we listen to the to the canon part through the reverb also. Okay, so I'm going to start and record the tenor part over the canon. Uh, for the multi-tracking, you already have a track that's laid down, and then you want to just enable, record or enable the track that you're going to be doing. Uh, you've set your panning, you've set your reverb, everything's all ready to go, so let's go. years later. Okay, I finished up the tenor part and I went ahead and recorded the superiors part the same way. Now I'm ready to bounce the section that I did. I just select the part that's the longest and I bounce it to disk, um, give it a name, and then it will write it just like that, all three parts, panned and reverb. Uh, now we're done with logic, so we can uh, quit this program. And now we'll move over to Final Cut Pro. We've got the audio and the video file here on the desktop, and we can clip those in Final Cut Pro, line them up, and we'll have a product that we can uh, distribute different places. Once we start a project in Final Cut, we can drag our video from the Teleminator all the way over to zero, which is on the left. Um, we can preview it to make sure it runs. Uh, it runs fine, so now we've got to cut all the talking and nonsense off of the beginning. Uh, what I usually do is the same as I do in Logic Pro, which is that I expand, um, I actually expand the size of the track so that I can see exactly where the sound uh, of the sound file begins. Uh, here there's a lot of talking and things going on, so I can just scrub through it until I find... Of course, this video is only the Canon part, so all we have to do is line up the bounced audio from Logic Pro to this Canon part, and then we'll have something ready to publish. So I'll just make sure that I have it starting as close to zero as possible. I've got some talking at the beginning. I've just got to cut that off. And that's the beginning of the playing part. Just line that up. Make sure it starts. So you just sort of use your hands and your ears and try to get it as close to the beginning as possible. And remember, we're also going to be using a different audio for this anyway, so uh, that's not going to matter too much. But we're going to line it up, so it's not going to be the canon part will be original, but the other two parts will be added. Uh, to do this, I drag my bounced audio underneath the video track. And in the audio, actually, uh, because the audio was only audio and not any talking or any other disturbance before, you can actually see when it begins visually, um, there's a long part, and then right here you can see that where it starts to begin with the audio. So I can just trim that off, and then I've got to visually line them up. And this can be tricky depending on what kind of things you have to synchronize. So it's not quite lined up yet. You can hear some a slap back in the audio. So I'm just going to expand this track a bit. We can get a closer look, and then we can actually cut off this part here so I can drag the audio to the left. I need more room to the left. So cut off that silence. Okay, and now we'll just take a stab at seeing if it's matched. One secret is you can play around with the volume on both tracks to test them out. Um, you can see if they match up. Okay, so I didn't hear any slapback or any disturbance, so I think everything's perfectly synced. I will mute the original Teleminator video, I don't need it anymore, and I will use the audio that I bounced for the original video instead. So I've added two parts there, make sure it's at zero decibels, and I'm ready to go.
and you end with a fade.